Hello, my name is Francisco Javier Rodriguez Lera. I work in the robotics group of the University of León in Spain. Today I'm going to present our work and our experience deploying NASA space robotic simulators in our virtual desktop environment called SAFER. SAFER stands for Simulation Framework for Education in Robotics. The inspiration of, for this idea is already in the literature and different companies are exploring these services right now. Our goal is to provide an environment with the required set of robotic software tools for our students. Current research approaches are supported in public GitHub repositories. However, do you think it's enough to replicate and test it? Our experience says that no. In order to replicate the same environment in multiple different computers, you need to change and manage different knowledge and you need to set up different scenarios and particular ad hoc cases. In this way, when you want to replicate the same environment, you need to do a hard work. And if this, if you have a huge class or you have many students to teach, you have to be worried about so, so, so many different problems. For instance, GitHub is a great example of this scenario. You can say, Oh, you can use a GitHub repository from Robot Operative System or any other tool. You just need to do a lot and test it. And probably most of you already know this is a really hard task to do in some cases. For instance, if we just read the documentation of GitHub, we can see here that the average of package dependencies in every GitHub repository is 203. Of course, you can find some packages or repositories with just a few dependencies, but you can find also some repositories with almost more than 1,000 uh, dependencies. In this way, our scenario is to try to offer desktop as a service or virtual desktop infrastructure. The idea of uh, virtual desktop infrastructure is just to uh, provide an infrastructure that could be used for a user anywhere and anytime using their own laptop or maybe their smartphone. The idea is that the users are not longer uh, suffering these issues of changing platform and they have always the same characteristics on your computer. We can find in the literature or mainly in the market two main solutions, uh, Amazon Web Services RoboMaker and the Construct. Both of them are amazing uh, solutions for offering these services for researchers and students. However, given the costs associated to these environments, we decide to do our own solution. I would like to put an example. If you want to try in one of these environments uh, a reinforcement learning algorithm, probably you will need to choose between a time restriction or a money restriction. What it does mean that you can have all the time that you want to, to use the infrastructure, but you are going to be charged for this use of the infrastructure. So when you are thinking and scaling this to many students, we just decide to move to our own architecture and create our own architecture. In that way, we come up with SAFER. SAFER is Simulation Framework for Education in Robotics. We know that it's a bit tricky name, but robotics and learn robotics is always tricky, you know? So it's just for fun. The idea is to follow a specific configuration, allowing for teaching and students uh, to provide an scenario, the robotics course, minimizing the installation phase. In that way, all the students or all the people involved in one development, they are going to share the same machine and the same characteristics. When you are sharing your source code, you are not worried about anything more just than programming. In that way, SAFER is a cloud solution for researchers to deploy and replicate the resources necessary to run a robot simulation environment. Of course, in a straightforward manner. The idea is to have a remote laboratory, then probably you will need to replicate a network services and then you will find a simulated environment, usually the robot. 
What we are doing in this case is just using Docker and Robot Operative System plus using Gazebo Simulator on top of Ubuntu uh, Operative System running our approach. In that way, we are able to, to allow to several students to connect to some of these remote laboratories and a teacher, one or multiple uh, teachers, supervise and manage this platform of our students. However, what we want to focus today is not in the software platform, is how this software platform is suffering the issues of installing one of the most extended NASA robotic simulator. In this case, what we are using, because we took part of two different competitions of the Amazon Web Services JPL Challenge Simulator on the top left part, and the Space Robotics Challenge Phase 2 Simulator on the bottom part. In both cases, they are running Ubuntu 18, ROS, Melodic, and we are running Gazebo Simulator. Of course, in the first one, is the classic uh, six-wheel rover, and in the bottom part, we have two rovers of four wheels, one of them with a movement arm. So, what is the discussion of these uh, virtual desktop environments? How is this machine uh, facing this issues of offering what NASA is offering for increase the community. In this case, we can see the same simulator running uh, belong, or together with uh, Visual Studio Code, with just some lines of code. So the first approach is uh, services. What we want to do is to teach uh, some of the problems that we are facing uh, when you are using a robot in a space environment. So for some of your students, you will want maybe uh, the streaming option or maybe the read-only options. In that way, uh, a student can connect to your server, see your desktop, and just see what you are doing there. But of course, we are allowing the read-write the read -write mode. Uh, it's just uh, release the student in the wildness. In that sense, uh, the student is able to use fully uh, the simulator and the machine, the virtual desktop. How we solve this or how we are doing that? Uh, we have several problems in mind. Uh, here, what we found is just the security feature. So we can see the security feature associated with uh, different uh, containers options. In our case, we choose a Docker option. But then, uh, given some of the restrictions related with the competitions, for instance, the Space Challenge uh, of NASA, uh, where they are providing a Docker solution to try your environments, we need to provide something like Docker in Docker. You will see in the in the standard abstract that we follow the Petazzo approach to run securely uh, Docker in Docker, but right now we are just exploring another options because it's just... Uh, is every day uh, someone is trying to, to manage this kind of scenarios. More issues that we are facing with this. We are using with quality service and latency delays. In this case, what we are facing are the classical approaches of uh, latency, jitter, bandwidth. Uh, the main problem of this virtual desktop are always the same, is that if you don't have internet connection, you are not able to connect to the system. So you don't have the system. Of course, even with that, you have to be careful of this quality of service because you don't want the students to be waiting for ages to run something. So in this way, what we can see here is one of the simulation of the environment. If we just, uh, in this case, what we are presenting is on the left part, the Gazebo simulator of the GPL, Amazon Web Service. Uh, on the middle, we have uh, just a typical terminal. On, on the right part that we are marking here, it's just the C top command showing what is the performance of the system running live. 
okay, at runtime. So once the robot is here, what we want to do is just with a typical teleoperation approach, typical teleoperation node, just moving the, the rover straight forward. So we are providing different commands with the keyboard, and we can see here that the CPU is almost in the 50%. The average memory spent in each case is uh, around 4 gigabytes of RAM. And this is the network consumption that is uh, running in this case. So what we can extract from this information? What we can extract is that when we are running Gazebo and our simple simulator, we can think that uh, more or less between 40 and 50% of your CPU is going to be consumed. In this case, what we are talking is about a machine with uh, 16 CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM in total. So what we are thinking is that if you need four gigabytes of RAM for one of these machines and you have 16, you will be able to run four machines. And if you are running everything at the same time, you will be out of CPU. What is the problem here? So the problem is that the ratio of uh, when you are working with this, the real time ratio, the simulator time, is under the real time. It means that it's not performing at real time. So what we need to do in, in our classes is just to remove this is called Casivo client, this is the visualizer. We just remove the, the visualizer and just run with the background Gazebo server just to maintain the characteristics of the environment and the simulation, and then run directly with directly our ROS nodes. So, which are the data of this? You can see here that the performance is not as we expected. We can find this like a big issue if you want to maintain the attention of the students. So the main problem here is that you need almost a full machine for you to run all this system. However, if you just run without the client, you are able to, to avoid some of these problems. So this data is when you are running with the Gazebo client. We can see that the real time factor is under one and the FPS frames per second of refresh of the screen is running more smoothly in the GPL challenge simulator than the space robotics challenge. This is because uh, we are using our own textures textures in the simulator. This green environment is less CPU consumes uh, need less CPU consumption than the textures that are used in the space robotics challenge. But for teaching algorithms, in this case, of navigation, it's not necessary to run with all this precision. Of course, if you want or you need it mandatory for recognizing objects in the environment, for instance, for your visual audiometry, you need to have in mind that maybe you will need to change some of the textures in order to or change the power of the computer to run this simulator more smoothly. Finally, another of the big issues related with this is the GPU requirements. Most part of the algorithms that we need today are based on machine learning algorithms, so we will need a GPU. A Space Robotics Challenge Phase 2 simulator needs it by default. Of course, they provide a mechanism where you can run purely using CPU. In this case, we just saw the approach running CPU. Conclusions. So in this case, is uh, we just want to highlight that it's highly motivational, this kind of environments from NASA that are open source or closed, like in the Space Challenge 2. They didn't use it. We are not using today, I'm presenting today. But the GPL is one of the the ones that we are using for to our students and in the robotics uh, subjects of the bachelor's degree. 
And of course, the power of traction is huge for undergraduate and early graduate students. Is using this kind of platforms is easy a way of sharing a replicating environment, so they are so happy to directly start working with it. However, all the issues that we were explaining along this presentation could be a drawback when you are showing, when you are facing or using sorry the approach. Finally, we just want to, to say our future work. Right now we are working to integrate a real uh, small rover based on the platform that uh, GPL released and also in the Swapi platform. We just did our own and adapt with European components. The second is just to add, is, is add a GPU to our system. And the third, third one is just to, to, to migrate some of these components to ROS2 and allow this uh, virtual desktop environment with ROS2. So that's all. Thank you for attending this presentation. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.